a face in the darkness, a man with perhaps a crooked smile staring straight through you, one thing on his mind, your prey, you're his now, and there will be no mercy, there will be no more life for you. Imagine prostitution, the oldest profession in the world. As much as a woman wants to earn money for a roof over her head for the night, or for food, or nowadays drugs, who knows? For generations, prostitutes have been subjected to abuse, and even murdered. Not a nice profession at all, with so many risks. But back in the 19th century, a killer was amongst them. I can only begin to imagine the fear that was amongst these women at the time. There was a killer about, who had a reputation for gutting women. No one had seen him, not any idea of what he looked like, only fear and unknowing. A bed for the night or a place in hell. What a decision to have to make. These women were easy prey, undesirables that no one wanted around, apart from those who seeked a good time of a certain type. The streets were dirty, unhygienic and polluted, with thousands crammed in amongst them. The women of the East End of London were the most vulnerable. Marriages had collapsed, families had disowned them, many had drink problems. The only thing they had to sell was themselves. Jack the Ripper is probably the most famous serial killer to date, but only because he was never caught and left a lot to the imagination. He put fear into the hearts of those East End women who wondered if they would be next. From the period of 3rd of April, 1888, through to February the 13th, 1891, 11 murders had taken place in and around Whitechapel in London, and they became known as the Whitechapel murders. It's unknown if Jack the Ripper had anything to do with the other six, but Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Ann Kelly were all the work of this notorious killer. They were all killed in such a way that detectives believed that their killer had to have known about the human body, leading them to believe that the killer was either a doctor or a butcher. But is this so? The five victims each had their necks sliced and mostly all had been gutted to some extent. Nichols' body was discovered at about 3.40 a.m. on Friday the 31st of August 1888 in Bucks Row, Whitechapel. The throat was severed by two cuts and the lower part of the abdomen was partly ripped open by a deep, jagged wound. Several other incisions on the abdomen were caused by the same knife. Chapman's body was discovered at 6 a.m. on Saturday the 8th of September 1888 near a doorway of the backyard of 29 Hanbury Street, Spitalfields. As in the case of Mary Ann Nichols, the throat was severed by two cuts, the abdomen was slashed entirely open, and it was later discovered that the uterus had been removed. Stride and Eddowes were killed in the early hour of Sunday the 30th of September 1888. Stride's body was discovered at about 1am in Gutsfield Yard off Burner Street in Whitechapel. The cause of death was one clear-cut incision which severed the main artery on the left side of the neck. Uncertainty about whether Stride's murder should have been attributed to the Ripper or whether he was interrupted during the attack stems from the absence of mutilations on the abdomen. Edo's body was found in Mitre Square in the City of London. Three quarters of an hour after Stride's, the throat was severed and the abdomen was ripped open by a long, deep, jagged wound. The left kidney and the major part of the uterus had been removed. A local man, Joseph Luende, had passed through the square with two friends shortly before the murder, and he described seeing a fair-haired man of shabby appearance with a woman who may have been Eddowes. His companions were unable to confirm his description. Eddowes and Stride's murder were later called the double event. Part of Eddowes' bloodied apron was found at the entrance of a tenement in Goldston Street, Whitechapel. Some writing on the wall above the apron piece, which became known as the Goulston Street Graffito, seemed to implicate a Jew or Jews, but it was unclear whether the graffito was written by the murderer as he dropped the apron piece, or merely incidental. Police Commissioner Charles Warren feared the graffito might spark anti-Semitic riots and ordered it to be washed away before dawn. Kelly's mutilated body was discovered lying on a bed in a single room where she lived at 13 Millers Court of Dorset Street, Spitalfield, at 10.45 a.m. on Friday 9th of November 1888. The throat had been severed down to the spleen and the abdomen almost emptied of its organs. The heart was missing. Was Jack the Ripper really a surgeon or a doctor? Who was this serial killer they called Jack the Ripper?
a detective believes he has discovered the age-long truth about who Jack the Ripper really was and has had an e-fit produced. A German sea merchant has been named as who he thinks is Jack the Ripper. Carl Feigenbaum fits the profile. I have for years suffered from a singular disease which induces an all-absorbing passion. This passion manifests itself to the desire to kill and mutilate every woman who falls in my way. I am unable to control myself, Feigenbaum allegedly told his lawyer. Jack the Ripper is one of the world's most famous cold cases. The identity of the man who brutally murdered five women in London's East End in autumn 1888 has always remained a mystery. More than 200 suspects have been named, but a former murder squad detective believes that the German sea merchant Karl Feigenbaum is the top suspect. Karl was convicted of murdering his landlady in Manhattan. He died in the electric chair in New York Sing Sing prison in 1894. His lawyer suspected him of the Ripper murders too. For a long time, it has been believed that Jack the Ripper was a doctor or a butcher because the skill in which the organs were removed. These could have possibly been cut out in the mortuary rather than by Jack at the scene. The 1832 Anatomy Act made it legal for medical personnel to remove organs for training purposes. This is supported by documents of the fourth victim, Catherine Eddowes. The inquest report showed that only 14 minutes elapsed from the time the police did their last sweep of the square in which she was killed and her body being discovered. Was that enough time to have killed Eddowes, remove her uterus with surgical precision and all in complete darkness? Regardless of how skilled you are with medical knowledge, this does seem a little unrealistic. Trevor Murray, author of the book Jack the Ripper, The 21st Century Investigation, believes Jack wasn't necessarily a surgeon after all. St Catherine and the London docks are a short way away from Whitechapel. Merchant seamen would have flocked there because of its red light district. Being so close would have made it easy for the killer to get back on the boat unnoticed. The gaps between the murders also suggest the killer may have been a traveller. Although some suggest that the killer was a resident of Whitechapel, wouldn't someone have given him up if a reward was offered? The Nord Deutsch Line, a German merchant vessel group, had a ship called the Raya docked at the time of the murders. The convicted murderer of Feigenbaum was a seaman on the ship at the time. After he died in the electric chair, Feigenbaum's lawyer, William Lawton, told the press he believed him to be responsible for the Ripper murders in London. Feigenbaum had confessed. He said to be suffering from a disease which periodically drove him to murder and mutilate women. What disease was it that made him commit such brutal acts? Today, psychiatrists are likely to describe it as a psychotic episode. Fortunately, not many people with psychotic tendencies go on to become serial killers, but those who do gain an infamy matched by no other crime. At the time, everyone believed all five women had been killed by the same man, but Elizabeth Stride may have died at the hands of another killer, as everything about her murder is different to the others. Firstly, the time the murder took place, and the knife used to cut her throat was much smaller than the other victims. Hence, the knife wound to her throat was much smaller, and she had no other mutilations. The location was different to all the others. The murder was right by the side of the workers' club, which was packed with men at the time. And now a serious question mark hangs over the death of Mary Kelly too. Fresh material has come to light which may suggest she was not Mary Kelly but someone else. If that is the case, there is a motive and likely suspects for her murder. Further evidence may show these murders were not committed by the same person. Feigenbaum could have been responsible for one, some or perhaps all. There is a new light to an old case, but it is certainly not solved, and this dark tale has many more secrets to give up before we know, for sure, the name of the man we call Jack the Ripper. <laughs>